Okay, and finally question six. So this looks like the current balance, my favorite bit of equipment available. A student placed a permanent magnet on a top pan balance. He clamped a straight piece of wire so that it was suspended in the magnetic field between the north and south, as we can see there. When a current is passed through the wire from A to B, the reading on the balance increases. Explain why. Right, so they must have put this thing on here, zeroed the scale so that it's not got any reading on it. Now, if you make a current flow through a piece of wire, a magnetic field will come into existence. There are two or three rules. There's the right-hand grip rule, which tells you if you've got a current flowing this way, the magnetic fields will be this way, or it tells you which end of a solenoid the North Pole will be at. If you know the currents are flowing in this, it, current is flowing around the loops this way, this will be the North Pole. That's the right-hand grip rule. That's not going to be that useful here. We've got the left-hand rule, Fleming's left-hand rule, and we've got Fleming's right-hand rule. Now, I like to remember it like this. Motion M C M C M C Waffy. Gonna play some music for you. Motion and current M C. Left hand rule tells me motion. So basically, <clears throat> now the field, I'll draw that on, I'll draw it on in red. The field here is always going to be north to south, this way. So I get my forefinger, the pointy finger, and I line it up with the field. And if the current is flowing, in this case, actually towards me, if the current is flowing this way along B, then this wire will be pushed up. Now, if the wire is being pushed up, then third law says if you push something, it pushes you back. What's pushed it? Well, the magnetic field interacting with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet interacting with the field around the wire is what's pushing the wire up. So the magnetic field is going to experience a force which is going to basically push the north-south magnets downwards. Right, so that's why. So that's quite a lot to write down. What are we going to write for this? So um, as the current flows, as current flows in the wire. A field I should really say a magnetic field, a magnetic magnetic field comes into existence. Right? This interacts with the field from the permanent magnets. It's and um, sorry, magnets in accordance with, in accordance with, which one? Fleming's left hand rule or right hand rule? Motion. It's the motion one, it's the left hand rule. With Fleming's left hand rule. Okay? Oh, by the way, uh, the number of people I see, very bright kids are often as well, will really not want to do this. Yes, you look like an idiot, but it works, so do it, okay? Go into an engineering exam, go into a physics exam in the top universities in the world, and you'll see people sitting there doing this and practically breaking their wrists, trying to get trying to get the thing to line up. No one finds it easy, and no one doesn't look stupid doing it. But they, if you do it, you'll pass the exam, so do it. Right, so I think that's that one explained. Okay, the student increases the current in the wire. Sketch a graph to show how the relationship between current and magnetic force on the wire. Label the axis with the independent variable on the x-axis. Right, independent is the thing you change. So the thing you change is going to be the current. You're changing current. Current. Um, current in amps. Right, always put your units. What are we measuring? We're measuring force. Force will be measured in newtons, okay? And I expect, as the current increases, the force to increase. And I expect the relationship to be linear, directly proportional, actually, uh, because it's starting at zero. So um, that's what I would expect to see. I haven't checked the mark scheme yet, but I'm pretty damn sure that that is correct. If I don't get this type of stuff right, then you can sack me, Mr. Trafford. <laughs> right. The length of the wire in the magnetic field is... 4.8 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So they've put it in meters this time for us. They're not trying to trick us with units. The current is 0.8 amps. The reading on the balance, ah, there is a units issue, is that that's not in newtons, is it? Right, put a question mark next to that. 
The gravitational field strength is this. Calculate the magnetic flux density of the permanent magnet. Right, if you're finding this topic a bit challenging, because I, I think that the um, field stuff is new to the spec, and certainly um, it's not been taught at GCSE for a long time, um, they're asking you to use the formula BIL, F equals BIL. Uh, it is on here, where is it? Oh, it's on the next page of the formula sheet, so I've not put it there. Nevertheless, it is F equals BIL. Pretend I have. Okay. B is magnetic uh, flux density. I is current. L is the length of the wire, and F is the force. Right? In this instance, it's the last question on the paper. It's a tough one. Because this this extra issue, I haven't got the force. I know the reading on the balance is that. I need to convert that back into force. So I'll do that first. W equals mg. I'm getting the reading in mass, right? The scale is designed to measure masses, right? But really what the scale is doing is calculating the force due to gravity, or sorry, measuring the force due to gravity, and then because we know on Earth that the gravity is 9.81 newtons for every kilogram, um, you can work backwards to the mass. So if W equals mg, right, um, we've got a mass of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3, times by 9.81, that's going to give me the weight that the scale is um, reading. Can't be bothered to do this in my head, so do it on the calculator, 1.2 uh, to the power of minus 3. That's how I set up powers on my calculator. You should really learn this stuff. 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Yep. Times 9.81. Okay, so I'm getting a really small force value here of 0 0.011772. Right? So I'm going to round that to 112. So we're going to say the force, or the weight and the force are the same thing, right? Force is 0 0.011 or 12. I think that will do. Newtons. Right, so now if I sub all these numbers into the equation, what, I, what I've got, I can do the same thing I said I would do earlier, which is try and, try and pretend that I'm not so good at algebra and I have to kind of. Well, I do actually remember when I was about 15, I really did struggle with uh, algebra. So, uh, being fair to most students, you know, I'm, I'm quite good at this stuff now, but reality-wise, when I first started, I wasn't. So, 0 0.012 is the f oh, if F equals B I L. That's what I'm subbing into. That's the force. B, oh, that's what I'm trying to find. I is 0 0.8. So, times by 0 0.8. Times by the length. 4.8 times 10 to the minus 2. 4.8 times 10 to the minus 2. Right, so if I just crunch out that bit, I can work out 0 0.8 times 4.8 times 10 to the minus 2. 0.8 times 4.2, sorry, 4.8 to the power of minus 2. 0 0.034. So I've got 0 0.012 equals B times 0 0.0384. Now if I divide both sides by 0 0.0384, I can get B on its own. B will be equal to 0 0.012 divided by 0 0.0384. And I'm getting a value of 0 0.3125, 0 0.31 Tesla. OK, so hopefully that's the correct answer. I will just have a check now. Zero point zero three one. Cool. OK, so that means I must have done the correct rearrangement. Let's check the um, straight line through origin. X-axis is current. And y-axis is labelled force, magnetic force. It says ignore units, but obviously units are should really be on there. The current creates a magnetic field in the wire, which interacts with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet. Fleming's left hand rule says the force will be upwards, so the force on the permanent magnet is downwards. Nice, perfect. Okay, so if you found this topic quite hard, I will put a link in the description to a video I've done recently for um, a student in my triple group who's missed a lesson, and you know I'm a dedicated teacher, so it's so it's there. And if you, anyone would like to um, watch that, uh, please please do so. Please comment, like, subscribe, and share if you've enjoyed these videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.